Okay, Newman projections. Uh, are a way to represent, um, at least in a two-dimensional way, conformers. And it's important to note that these are not isomers uh, because uh, isomers can be isolated. Um, where conformers cannot because the rotation around the single bond happens too fast. Um, so let's let's see what that is. So an ethane we know looks like uh, there's two carbons surrounded by six hydrogens. But you know it, it's it's really this is just a shorthand way of describing ethane. It really doesn't look like this. It's not two dimensional. It's not flat. If you were just to take a quick look at it, what it actually looked like three-dimensionally, let's be two. It would look like like this picture here, right? So uh, it's actually three-dimensional structure. Here are the two carbons in black, obviously. And then it's um, surrounded by the uh, hydrogen atoms. So to depict that on paper, what we do is we make this, the front carbon here, and then uh, this the uh, back carbon which we can't see so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture we're actually viewing it from this front here okay and um, if you can kind of uh, it's kind of tough to envision but this front carbon if you can kind of look at it from just kind of straight away from this angle here well, you notice that this this uh, carbon this I'm sorry this hydrogen going up these two coming down it kind of looks almost like a piece symbol right and then if you look at the one behind it, well, if you're looking at it from this angle, you wouldn't be able to see the carbon behind it, right? Let me see that again. If you were to look at this carbon in front directly, uh, if you were directly in front of it, you wouldn't be able to see this carbon behind it. You would just see just the hydrogen sticking out. In this case, it's kind of like an inverted piece symbol. So let's try to draw that here. Let's see what it would look like. If we draw the Newman projection of that ethane, I'm just going to draw a dot to represent the front carbon and I'm going to draw kind of like a piece symbol like that in a circle all right and again that dot represents the front carbon if I'm looking at it directly straight and uh, what I can do is I can draw the hydrogens I can draw the hydrogens coming off that front um, coming off that front carbon. This is what I just drew this right here. This carbon which is the dot surrounded by the three hydrogen atoms here. Now let's uh, remember now I'm looking at it kind of uh, straight ahead now and I can't see the second carbon behind it. So let's say that I just drew this here. Just drew this part here. Right? And I'm looking at it uh, maybe something like that. Oh, yeah, like that. And I can't see this car behind it because this guy's blocking it. Actually, it might be more of a uh, an angle going along this way, but hopefully, you get the point. So, if I can't see the car behind it, the only thing I'm gonna, the only thing I'm going to be able to draw is the hydrogen sticking out that are inverted. So, kind of like a reverse piece symbol, except I don't draw this. Uh, in this case, I drew a blue line all the way to the center because, again, this area here is this dot, and this area here is reserved for that front carbon. The only thing I can draw is, uh, or, or actually are the hydrogens kind of sticking out the back. Right? So these three blue hydrogens represent what? They represent this uh, kind of uh, inverted piece symbol sticking out. I didn't draw on the second carbon because we can't see it. If we're looking at it from this angle here, it's kind of blocked by the front carbon. Right? So that's Newman projection for a uh, staggered staggered ethane. Now, to keep things simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw that front 
should be a straight line. I'm going to redraw that front carbon, but now I'm just going to turn, I'm just going to turn uh, this bond here. I'm just going to turn this bond right in the middle here. Since it's a single bond, there's free rotation. Again, since this is a single bond, there's free rotation. So I'm just going to turn it 60 degrees. And so I'm just going to turning that single bond there. Each rotation, I'm going to turn it 60 degrees. Just actually. I'm just going to turn this this way. So I'm going to turn that 60 degrees. And I'm going to get something that looks like this, where now you have these front hydrogens kind of um, blocking the view of the hydrogens, uh, or the view to be able to see the hydrogens in the back. And once I turn the 60 degrees, so since these are kind of blocking these hydrogens here, they just kind of they're just kind of peeking out, right? the hydrogen in the back. I'm going to call this eclipsed. Since it's blocking it, like you know, during, a, uh, during an eclipse, uh, you see the, the moon block the sun. It's the same thing. This here is uh, the, this front hydrogen atom is blocking this one. That's right behind it, so that's eclipsed. And all I did was I just rotated the, that bond that's in the middle here, so I rotated it 60 degrees. So these are uh, conformers of the ethane molecule. <clears throat> so wh which which has more energy? Well, atoms like to have space. Uh, the comparison I, I like to make is uh, if you go into a subway car and uh, if you see you know a bunch of seats because it's a weekend, uh, you're going to be more relaxed. You're not going to be as dense. However, if it's crowded like during rush hour, right? It's crowded during rush hour. What's going to happen is you're going to feel a little bit more tense because somebody's right up on you, right? So these atoms are the same way. They don't like to be cramped. So this is actually going to have more energy because uh, it's it's a little bit cramped now, where it's a little bit further apart when it's staggered. These two hydrogen atoms. So these two hydrogen atoms are going to be a little bit further apart when it's staggered as opposed to when it's eclipsed, or when they're eclipsed. So there's going to be more energy, and it's actually four, four kilojoules per mole of energy. And so if there's three of them, oh, you have four kilojoules per mole here. How many you have here? Of course, you have four kilojoules per mole. All right. So uh, another term, another fancy term you might hear is uh, instead of the energy due to these two atoms, you know, kind of cramping each other's style, you might see something called torsional strain. Means the same thing. Right? Well, it means that these guys are kind of straining a little bit because, again, atoms like to uh, have their own space, um, so it would require more energy uh, for them to be in this. Eclipse confirmation as opposed to the stagger. And if you add up all the uh, areas of torsional strain or, or these areas where these hydrogens are kind of you know, cramping each other's style, you, you're going to get four times three, so you get 12 kilojoules per mole total energy. Uh, that this confirmation uh, possesses as opposed to this one. Right. So, how would that look on a uh, energy diagram? Well, it's real simple. Right. We need something like this. First, it's going to start in stagger, which is low. And go up to eclipsed. And let's say if I keep rotating it. If I keep rotating that single bond, let's see if I start out with be staggered. Let's 
gives you this much energy. Now, let's say that this represents a change in a different color here. This represents a change in 12 kilojoules per mole. Well, according to this energy diagram, that must mean I probably turned it 60 degrees, so now I'm in the which confirmation? The eclipse. Right? I rotated that single bond. Now, if I rotate another 60, it's kind of easier if you have the molecular miles to do this, but if I rotate another 60, I'm going to be uh, back to a staggered I'm going to be back to a staggered confirmation, and um, we can actually rotate this, unfortunately, but if, if you rotate this 60, then another 60, it's just going to bring you right back to the staggered, and if you rotate another 60, it's going to be back to the eclipse, and so on. Because with each turn, what's happening? With each turn, this guy, uh, again, when I'm turning, I'm keeping the, if I keep the front carbon stationary, I'm just turning the, this, this, from this point here, the carbon uh, in the rear. This guy is going to be at first stagger to this. I turn to the 60, then it's going to be eclipsed. Then if I turn to the 60, it's going to be staggered again. All right, so this would be over here now where this hydrogen atom is. And then if I turn it another 60, if you can imagine, it's going to be eclipsed, but now this one's going to be all the way up here. Okay. Um, yeah, if you have molecular models, I, I suggest you just try to run your own. And uh, you'll see that with every 60 degree turn, it's just going to go from staggered to eclipse, staggered to eclipsed, staggered, to eclipsed, and I'm going to get back to staggered. And Because uh, each area of torsional strain or, or each confirmation, uh, each eclipse confirmation is going to uh, consist of a torsional strain of 4 kilojoules per mole per hydrogen hydrogen interaction. So it's going to be 12 each time, right? Because you have three, because you have three hydrogens, right? On each carbon atom that are interacting with the other carbon atom. So it's 4 times 3, that's 12. Those just for mole. And let's imagine that when I make the first turn, that's 60. And then I'm going to make another turn, that's 120. I make another 60 degree turn, that's 180. So I'm about halfway around. Um, again, it, it's, a, it's a, the turn of that. It's just... Just go back a little bit. Just to recap. Okay, and all I'm doing is all I'm doing is I'm turning this bond here. This carbon carbon bond. Single bond's got free rotation. If it was a double bond, I wouldn't be able to do it, but single bond you can. So right now I'm about halfway around at 180 degrees. I've turned that bond. Okay, now if I rotate another 60, what is it? It's gonna be 240. Okay. I'm going to be at the staggered confirmation again. Rotate another 60. Just got to add it up. That's 300 degrees I've turned so far. I'm at eclipsed. And then if I make a complete revolution of that bond, turn it 360 degrees. And where am I? I'm at staggered right back where I started. Okay, so this is one complete. This would be an energy diagram of. One complete revolution, you could say, of the carbon carbon bond of the field. And sometimes they might want to even uh, tell you, they might want you to even uh, draw in you know, the different uh, NUMA projections of each one, which uh, you, know, you could do. You just draw a stagger down here, which is what? My piece symbol. Then an inverted one right behind it. Eclipsed. 
Yeah, what I like to do is just, just keep the front one um, in the same position. So all you're doing is you're rotating just to maintain some consistency, you're rotating just the one in the rear. So Eclipse is just going to be, you know, these guys kind of peeking out a little bit. And Stagger, just going to draw that same piece similar in the front, inverted one in the back, Stagger, and so on. Just going to draw this identical picture of an Eclipsed. Front one, I'm just going to maintain again the same uh, kind of position and then just rotate the one behind it. Back to staggered. Back to let me draw the same picture. Back to eclipsed. Eclipsed again means that you know this this the, the, the rear um, kind of like the rear uh, view of this the rear hydrogen is kind of eclipsed by the front one. And then I'm gonna rotate it one more time. Uh, 60 degrees in the same direction. Again, all, all we'll just keep rotating forward 60 degrees in the same direction. Now I'm back to staggered. 